welcome to Top Gear Motorsport and welcome to the Hockenheim circuit in Germany. We're here for the last round of the 1994 German Touring Car Championship, a series already won by the Mercedes of Klaus Ludwig. And later on in the programme, I'll be driving that championship winning car. Mercedes have invited me out to Hockenheim to try this new C-Class. But to be honest, on a racetrack, I need something with a bit more bump. Mind you, I suppose that's not the sort of thing you'd expect from the world's favourite taxi. I mean, executive saloon. Now that looks a bit more like it. This is a Class 1 racing Mercedes. It's got the same silhouette as the standard car but it's got a very much a racing wing on the back. Mind you, the roof is still steel, just like the original, but the front end of the car is very much carbon composite. Underneath, there's a lot more carbon fibre, with carbon fibre radiator intake, brake duct intake, and even the bulkhead that takes the steering rack. And all this enables the V6 engine to be pulled out, complete with this huge airbox and changed in just about 11 minutes. And that's what's needed when there's only 22 minutes between each race. Let's get this bodywork back on, the racing kit on, and see how it performs. Right, ready for action. And the racing car also lacks some of that comfort of the road car. I'm sitting almost in the back seat to help weight distribution. It's a hard racing seat and a racing steering wheel very close to me. Sequential gearbox and a lot of computer gadgetry. Let's find out if it all works. Well, this is nice and quiet as we go out for our first ever lap in a German touring car. Weaves around a bit, as you'd expect. Hit the brakes, you can feel a little bit of a kick through. The engine feels very responsive. And it doesn't sound that noisy, but I've got my earplugs in. Hold on, hold on. I've taken a wrong turning somewhere. Back up a bit, a bit more. There! That's the Hockenheim we all know, sitting in the slipstream, jostling for position down the long, long straights that are broken up by three Mickey Mouse chicanes before returning to the twisty stadium section. But we were on the short track that cuts across behind the paddock where a fast left-hander leads into a slow, tight right, which rejoins the Grand Prix circuit just before the stadium. The German touring car racers use it once a year, and it's all action. A few laps to learn the lines and then in for a discussion with Klaus Ludwig's English engineer, Edward Turner. I mean, they, they do it very quickly. Yeah, yeah. And they're changing down. Of course, we have sequential gearboxes in Britain, but this German series features all sorts of high-tech devices that aren't allowed here. This means big budget racing, and only Mercedes, Opel and Alfa Romeo are prepared to spend the five to ten million pounds needed to run a two-car team. Ludwig recognises that the limited manufacturer interest could be a worry. It is a problem because if somebody stops, then it's a big problem. As long as we are three, and as long as we have 25 or so cars, and as long as we have good drivers, big names, it's more than enough. It would be very, very nice to have one or two more in, but I think it would kill this thing if there would be seven or eight. For 95, Klaus has switched to drive an Opel for ex-Formula One champion Keke Rosberg, who doesn't see any problems having only three works teams. On the contrary, it's very easy to organise things when you have only three manufacturers. It would, be, it would be nice if we got a fourth one in here. That would be the perfect balance, I think. Um, it gets very messy when you have ten manufacturers arguing about everything. I was sharing the circuit with all sorts of other Mercedes and works driver Roland Ash was giving rides to Mercedes customers in Ellen Law's race car. It seemed like a good chance to hitch a ride and pick up a few tips. Well, uh, 
I've got a bit to learn. I, thought, I, I think I can see how it's done. It's just uh, putting it into practice might be a little bit harder. But those brakes. The German series allows anti-lock brakes, outlawed in the rest of the world's touring car formulae. But Ludwig is convinced they don't detract from the skill of the driver. Not at all. This was the big mistake in Formula One. Some big people thought they take something away. It's not true. At the end of the day, it's still the same ones who are in front, and it's as complicated to do. The problem with anti-lock brakes is that if you misjudge them, it looks like you simply drive into the car in front. Without the drama of locking wheels, it's hard to tell if the contact was intentional or not. Although this retaliation by Nanini in his Alpha definitely was. But the stunt backfired. Literally. Then there are times when the mechanism fails altogether, as Keke Rosberg found out at Hockenheim. They may be good, but they have their drawbacks. The power brake doesn't really help us. That's very, very hard work because the ABS system really kicks you back straight through the bone, you know, and it's, it's, that's very uncomfortable and hard. Uh, I don't know, I've always found it hard work to drive race cars, basically giving some laziness. <laughs> you know. The only high-tech device the Germans have dropped is active suspension, also banned in Formula One but they do have electronic damper control, which means they are automatically adjusted corner by corner to give the best handling characteristics. I didn't get involved with all that, but after a few laps and with the times fairly respectable, I could concentrate on describing what the car was like to drive. A lap then of Pockenheim short circuit in a class one Mercedes-Benz, fourth gear, whoa! Up to fifth, and then here we go. Slam the ABS and punch the gears down to first, and then boot it. We've got traction control to help keep the rear wheel drive under control. Just 10 inch tyres. Oh, five, four, three, two, one. Flick it in. Power. Second. Oversteer. Third. Fourth. Feathering. Hit the curb. Oh, one, one, two, one. When you're testing a Mercedes, you have to share the track with trucks. And that's our old friend, Steve Parrish. Come on, Stavros, get that old heap out of the way, will you? The old steam blowing off the brakes. <laughs> now I'm covered in it. But that's one lap. Oh boy, is it busy. They need 38 laps racing here, and that must be quite exhausting. But it's this ABS, which is phenomenal. Oh, I can't press the brake hard enough. The limitation to your braking is simply how hard you press that pedal. Bit of oversteer in there. I quite like that. Oh, it's so nice to be in rear wheel drive mode. Whoa, over that little curve. And then slam. My poor little foot is getting worn out already. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, another bit of oversteer in. More oversteer. Let's have a bit of curve tip. A bit understeer in that last corner. I guess Mr. Ludwig uses a lot more curve than I do. Whoopoo, whoopoo. I just love it! The German Championship starts this weekend on the Hockenheim short circuit, and later in the series, we hope to be showing you how well Mr. Ludwig gets on when he swaps from this Mercedes to one of Keke Rosberg's Opals. <laughs>